welcome to Truth, Health, and Wellness with Matt and Deborah St. John. We are going to have an awesome show for you, and you are going to learn a whole lot and hopefully have some questions to ask them. So, Matt and Deborah, tell me a little about yourselves. Oh, wow. Well, we have St. John's Nutrition. We're located over on uh, Snow Street in Oxford. We've been there almost 30 years. Uh, we've been at this my whole life. Um, I, I picked her up about eight years ago and met her in church, and uh, we got married. She's an RN. And when I met her, she had a diet Mountain Dew, uh, a sniffle or a, a cough, and two kids with al allergy problems. So I, I knew I had a project there, but we, uh, we got going and uh, got rid of her cough and got her off the diet Mountain Dews and got her kids better, and then she married me. So um, now we have an RN, and uh, that, was, that was awesome. And so since then, we've taken on this whole new dynamic at St. John's Nutrition. We've, been, we've always been in natural medicine. We've always been into herbs. We've had a manufacturing company, and we've been doing that for a long time and opened a lot of franchise stores. But recently, we went nonprofit. So we got our 501c3 just a few years ago. Actually, we were approved during COVID, and, uh, and that sort of has changed everything. So now we're a nonprofit 501c3, so we have a lot of outreach that we're doing. And one of those outreaches is to the Amazon and, uh, in Peru, which started out just for the natural medicine. Um, but we, uh, we, now we fell in love with the people, and so we're, we're actually traveling back there Tuesday. So we have a lot going at St. John's. We've been basically doing just na all forms of natural medicine. If it's safe, if it works, uh, and it's healthy and doesn't cause side effects, then we use it for, uh, in naturopathic medicine. So uh, that's what we do, and we've been doing it for a long time, it seems like, but we're sort of entering in new phases every few months, it seems like. And now, Deborah, you as an RN came out of that world, and now you're into the naturopathic world as well. Uh, how, how does that shift your whole change, view well, and change everything for you? It was pretty big. I, um, you know, I worked very hard to get my um, RN license, and um, I worked in the in the trenches. You know, I was I was a floor nurse. I, I did cardiac step down. I um, I did rehab uh, for heart patients, and I did that for seven or eight years. I didn't know anything about natural medicine at all. Um, I was actually in nursing school told to be leery of it when people were taking natural medicine to um, normally to stop it before you know, we started them on whatever prescriptions we, we would put them on in the hospital. So I was, um, I was getting a little weary of um, just what was going on in the hospital and here came, here came Matt. He, uh, he sat down next to me in church and was concerned about my cough, and I was like, why are you so concerned about my cough? And it turned out he... had nothing to do with you being adorable or anything, but... Anyway. <laughs> turned out he, uh, he was a naturopathic doctor, and he uh, knew a lot more than I ever dreamed. Um, and so every day, I've been learning something from him and growing, and um, it's just a very, been a really exciting journey. She's a research scientist. She spends uh, so much time. She's actually quite a nerd. And, uh, but I, and we love it. We're both a good nerds. One. Well, we're both nerds, yeah. <laughs> and, and we spend time researching things that most people would find extremely boring, uh, but it turns into research that turns extremely exciting. So you may think that, you know, uh, the pineal gland's boring, but when you're sitting in a hut in an indigenous, you know, uh, village in Peru on the Amazon River having tea with, you know, a shaman, that gets kind of a little bit cooler. A Christian shaman, by the way. And uh, so, so, our lives have dramatically changed during this, but what's cool is how well it's, it sort of transposes into better health for our people here. And so our goal with what we're doing down there is we have a, we have a retreat center called St. John's Amazon Wellness that we plan to send people from here down there too to experience the medicines there that they can use. Uh, but also uh, to serve as a, as a sort of a place where we can send people from here to also uh, help the people there and to bless them. And so they're going to be bringing goods for them and these sorts of things, and it's to educate. When we went down to begin with, we thought it was just for the medicine. We thought we were literally just trying to find good sources for medicines. Uh, before we know it, we found that and a thousand times more. We were you know, making deals with Peruvian export agents and all these different things, and we found the largest exporter of entheogenic medicine in the world. Um, was able to tour their facility, and we're friends with them now. And so it's really neat what God's done in the past few years, and actually just since COVID. Because what COVID really did, more than anything, it validated natural medicine. Because the people that used natural medicine during COVID did great. We're part of the Concerned Doctors Group, and, uh, and we've, they've done a lot of research into our P77 formula that we, we made for, the, for COVID. But since then, there's been such an influx of new people coming in 
with natural medicine to to sort of investigate it or you know they're like well it worked for my covid so you know maybe it'll work for my big toe and it's like well we can help your gout too so you know uric acid levels kidneys etc so so people are turning on to it and it's cool because we uh, our first book that we're working on right now is called anarchy medicine and it tells the story of medicine in the world globally uh, and then basically what happened to modern medicine. Of course, we were beside, behind the scenes talking about some of this with the, with the team here. And uh, we were all, it was cool because we were all in, all in agreement. But, uh, but we call it anarchy medicine. And, and the, basically when Rockefeller medicine, when petroleum-based medicines, pharmaceuticals, became the norm, and when Rockefeller not only took over the medical industry but also the education of this country, um, things began going downhill. And while we are certainly work with medical doctors, I'm friends with more medical doctors than naturopaths. I think they consider me less competition or something. So um, it's like a lot of naturopaths work with her, and they don't even care anything about me. So that's fine. That's why we, you know, are multifaceted. But as we're as we're moving forward and we're learning more, we're bringing more uh, hope to the table for people here. And and as we get into issues that we're finding more common today, like Alzheimer's, dementia. Uh, problems with uh, still people with COVID brain fog, they can't think straight. I mean, as you go out and drive from one end of the county to the other and you know people can't think straight. So what we're doing right now is focusing heavily on things like brain fog, on things like uh, helping to prevent Alzheimer's and, and you know dementia. And we're finding, you know, it was interesting because I think about four weeks ago we put out a, a post on Facebook, one of our controversial little posts, and it says something like Alzheimer's is not hereditary, uh, it's in your gut. Well then, you know, a few people commented and it opened up a lot of interesting, you know, comments. Well then, three weeks later, we see a study where they had concluded three separate studies showing that Alzheimer's begins in the gut, that it begins in the gut biome, and that there's a communication between the gut and the brain. And of course, that just blows a lot of people away, but not the people that have been researching it for a right. long time. And so, you know, I, I laid in the bed beside my grandfather as he passed away from Alzheimer's, and listening to his good heart try to keep him alive, his good lungs trying to get air as his bad brain would work. And he would, had been in the military and he had, you know, had several things happen in the military that caused him, we believe, to have the environmental toxicity that caused his Alzheimer's uh, in time. So it's, it's a, a special, a very important thing to me. Uh, and we're seeing so many children today also with behavioral disorders, mental disorders, problems, and there's so many parents who are taking the situations that they have with their children's health as it being the end. This is just something they're gonna to have to do. They're gonna to have to raise this child until the child, you know, mm -hmm. until they pass away. And then, I mean, this, that's, that's not always right. That's not always correct. There's always hope for people to have better health. And that's what we really focus on. We don't, we don't hype, we don't, uh, we don't recommend people not do medications or, or medical procedures. We work with physicians. And that's really helped us over the years to get the attention and sort of get the friendships with a lot of physicians. I think about some of our, our local area doctors that we work with on a regular basis, and it's really sweet and precious how so many of them have gone out of their way to research, on, you know, using time that they don't even have. Most medical doctors work between 60 and 70 hours a week. That's why I'm not a medical doctor. Um, I work that, but I work at my pace. So, you know, when we have people that are working that hard and doing that much, they don't have time to sit and study things they were never taught, but they had better, yeah. and they know that. And so we have so many that are coming to us to ask us questions, and then I ask them questions. We rely on each other. And so it's very, it's, it's a good trade, it's a good, it's a good compromise, and it's something that we work with to help people, and it's, it's helping and blessing others. Let's go back for a minute to what you're talking about with brain fog. So tell the viewers, what is it that you currently have for brain fog and how does it work? Uh, something with the spine or something that you had mentioned before? Tell, tell us a little it's pretty about neat. that. We started looking into, we kept having people who were getting COVID, right? And, but they were having various degrees of what they were calling brain fog. Um, I started looking into the research and they were saying that COVID brain fog was caused by this peculiar uh, inflammation of the cerebrospinal fluid. And the cerebrospinal fluid is what goes up and down your spine, goes up to your brain. It's what suspends uh, between your brain and your skull and acts sort of as a shock, shock absorber. And then it bathes the pineal gland, uh, which is, they really don't know why or understand why, but it bathes the pineal gland. So this, this cerebrospinal fluid becomes inflamed in particular with COVID. And it's unique to COVID. It's, it doesn't do the same thing with influenza, uh, which is curious. But this cerebral spinal fluid inflammation can be completely offset using something as simple as tamarind. 
tamarind. It's kind of neat. There's a Latin market just uh, down the down the road here that we found out it has tamarind fruit water, and that's where they just take make the fruit water out of the uh, various types of fruits. Well, they use tamarind. Tamarind is a seed pod about this long. Uh, there's some sweet tamarind and there's sour tamarind, but all of it's sour. And they have seeds in them. And then around the seeds, if you open the pod, there's a sticky, pasty substance. And what you do is you get the pasty substance out of around the seeds, and you extract the seeds, and you use that paste. Well, the tamarind has been shown clinically in more than one study to reduce cerebrospinal fluid inflammation, and it also uh, concurrently reduces the amount of calcification of the pineal gland. Well. A lot of folks know about the pineal gland, and the pineal gland is, is sometimes called your third eye in, the, in some cultures and, and whatnot, but most people uh, understand that the pineal gland helps with your body's sleep patterns, uh, your body's equilibrium, and also um, people that study it further find out that it also produces something called DMT, which is a curious compound. A curious. Uh, so, so the pineal gland is extremely important. De Socrates in 1560 said that the seat of our soul is in our pineal gland, and it's how God communicates with humans. And nothing else was said about the pineal gland until 1952, when they discovered melatonin. So then they discovered melatonin and said, oh, well, it's your, you know, it's, it has to do with your sleep and so forth. But then they discovered DMT in 1999. So that's that's when it was discovered by Strassman. So there's it's really neat when you look into tamarind. This this kind of tasty little fruit pod, you know, seed pod thing that, uh, that's used a lot in, in Latin food, it's used a lot over in Asian food, but that this particular extract by itself will decalcify the pineal gland, along with help with the reduction of that cerebrospinal fluid inflammation. So we found out also that rosemary terpenes, which are the constituents of rosemary that make it smell like it smells, uh, that those also work to help with that cerebrospinal fluid inflammation. And so we made this combination formula, and it's a liquid formula. And it's, uh, it has tamarind as the main ingredient, which, uh, which is pretty funny because A1 steak sauce has tamarind. That's the only thing you'll see normally that's a normal food product that you know, has tamarind. Uh, we actually got in some tamarind powder the other day, and it was, mm -hmm. it's delicious. Okay. So we're using it in another formulation. But yeah, it's, uh, this brain fog formula has been helping a ton of people. And it's not just for COVID you know, brain fog, but it's for people who are dealing with issues with just memory. Uh, and we have kids taking it, we have adults taking it. I take it when I can remember. So even if you're a high school student out there and uh, you've got some big tests coming up, hey. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's major. These, these high school students today are, are really, um, they're really heavily burdened. The teachers yeah. are heavily burdened. Uh, there's so much issue with, with retention of knowledge and, and uh, kids that are taking some simple nutritional supplements. I'm not talking about having your kid on 20 pills. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's a matter of just getting your kid. Another thing is def nutritional deficiencies. That's what I was going to ask you next, because I yeah. know some of that stems from chemicals used. Absolutely. And right. we've got a lot of a big farming community around here, let alone when we get nation talking about nationwide, what goes into our soil and food and all that. That's a whole other bucket of worms. I yeah, this, you, you've just there. named three buckets of three different types <laughs> of worms. So uh, getting to the, uh, well, getting over into nutritional deficiencies from children. First off, how many kids around here eat two or three servings of fish a week? So how ours, are they getting? Ours don't eat ours, any. Ours don't. Ours won't even eat yeah. fish. So an omega-3 supplement. Now, recently there's been some fire under uh, omega-3 supplements, especially some of the, the worst brands and the low-quality stuff. But an omega-3 supplement is extremely important because how else are these children going to have the omega-3s that protect their cells and protect their brains and help their brains when they're not eating fish, which is the only source of omega-3s virtually that we can eat. I mean, I don't know how many avocados they're eating in a day, or, or and your nuts and seeds have omega-6 and 9 fatty acids, and we get plenty of those, but we don't get enough of the fish. So the omega-3 fatty acids would be one of the things to look at for a lot of kids to make up for in their nutritional deficiencies. Uh, and then other things are things like B12, uh, protein for a lot of kids. A lot of kids don't consume enough protein. Mm -hmm. So simply those amino acids. Amino acids, um, let's say if you have a puzzle, a completed puzzle, like I've sat and taken my time to complete a thousand piece puzzle, which I would never do. Um, each one of this, each piece of this puzzle, we could call an amino acid. One completed puzzle, we could call one gram of protein. One gram of protein has a thousand milligrams of various amino acids that construct the, that gram of protein. Now, each one of those amino acids are specific and do many different things in the body. So there's, there's L-glutamine, there's L-theanine, there's L-tyrosine, there's L-tryptophan. Now, every one of the amino acids that I just mentioned have a lot to do with your focus, 
how clearly you can uh, perceive uh, data and how you process data. So if you're nutritionally deficient in protein, you don't have a puzzle. Your puzzle isn't even there, so you don't have any of the pieces of the puzzle to even do any of it. So people who are deficient in protein are typically people who skip breakfast. They're not eating eggs. Uh, they're not eating enough for lunch. They're eating the happy foods. What makes us happy? What do we want to eat when it's 10 p.m. or 10.30 at night? We don't want, you know, I want a steak. No, I want, I want a piece of chicken. Pizza or a you know, carb. Yeah. yeah, I want mm -hmm. a Chip. bag of Doritos or, yeah. you know, something with some trans fats in it. And maybe, but the main thing is carbs. You want those carbs. Why? Why do you want carbs before you go to bed? Because your body needs that, ser or wants that serotonin kick. Mm -hmm. You get a little serotonin boost when you eat and it makes you happier. And it can make you rest easier, you know, your, if your serotonin is higher. Um, dopamine is the other neurotransmitter hormone that's, you know, talked about, but dopamine is easy to keep high. All you have to do is take your cell phone and do this on Facebook for a minute and your dopamine levels through the roof. But serotonin is the hard thing to do. Well, at night, before we go to bed, we crave those carbohydrate foods because it provides quick serotonin. It also provides quick belly fat and quick digestive issues and quick acid reflux and quick problems that come, you know, from as time travels. So, so you know, getting out of that lifestyle, getting into uh, knowing how to eat because when you eat protein, what happens when you in the, in the morning when you have, if you had steak and eggs, are you going to be hungry at 10 o'clock? Are you going to be hungry at 11 o'clock? You might not even be hungry at 12 o'clock yeah. yeah. because you had steak and eggs. Now that's called satiety and that means that we're full. That means we're full of it <laughs> and the longer we're full of it, <laughs> the, uh, the better we feel and the less we need carbs. So that's why these people that go on these, and I don't agree with a completely um, animal fat, animal protein diet. I'm not, I don't go there. Sorry, Daryl and a few others that know <laughs> me. Um, but I don't really go with that. But a 40-40-20 split, and that's what I'm saying is, of your total calories that you eat during the day, if you get approximately 40% of those calories from protein, then make sure not to get much more than 40% of those calories from carbohydrates. Don't even worry about the fat because the fat will come and you know it always does and it's not something that most people, I mean you know if you're eating bacon all day long, you know right. you know if you're eating fat, most people are getting too much sugar, they're getting too many carbs, but then they go on these diets, quote unquote diet, which everyone's, everyone's on a diet, it's just most are bad, uh, diet is simply how you eat, but people that go on diets think that they need to restrict those carbohydrates more than they do, well then that causes them to have brain fog. So some people are having brain fog today because they don't have enough carbohydrates in their brain, sugars in their brain for them to even function properly. So we don't agree with that, but at the same time, it's a lot easier to say get the same amount of protein and carbs than it is to do it because carbs are so easy. You can eat a piece of grilled chicken breast that's this big and you have 30 grams of protein, maybe 25 or 30 grams of protein, then you can turn around and have a piece of bread. Yeah. You know, and you're like, that was just a piece of bread. Well, yeah, sorry, you got 25 or 30 grams of protein, you're done. Yeah. So you have to be careful and mindful, and that's why you need to focus on vegetables and fiber and the good quality carbs that we need. So there's, there's just a lot to it. There's so much um, when it comes to uh, even just being, being mentally aware and cognitive that has to do with your diet, and then that's why we call it supplements, nutritional supplements. They're to supplement your diet from the things that you should be eating and aren't. Um, we have to nutritionally supplement omegas ourselves because we ourselves don't eat enough fish. And that's just one of the things. So it's with, but with children, it's normally protein, omega-3s, and B12, and a lot of times magnesium that they're deficient in. People who are constipated, who have a, you know, they, they spend, I, we have a chart a lot of times we'll ask people, it's like, how many bowel movements do you have per day? And, it, and I used to have it said one, two, three, four, five plus, and they'd circle whatever. I have people who will literally circle one, but then out beside it put per week. Wow. Right. And that's an uncomfortable topic. It's not the greatest thing, but that's why we have the show, um, is to talk about things like this. But that's not right. Yeah. That's a mess. And that's indicative of future colon cancer and a, a myriad of other health problems. So uh, we, we certainly don't, um, don't advocate you know, going on that type of a diet or, or living that lifestyle uh, for too long. It's, we, you, people need to make the changes in their lives and in their kids' lives that are, that are not always that difficult that will change permanently their, their health. Well, with children too, it's some of the stuff they're putting in their bodies that they don't understand either is yeah. hurting them real Oh terribly. yeah, red 40, yellow 5, trans fats, uh, those are all those are all banned in other countries, legal still in this country. High fructose, um, corn, high fructose syrup. corn syrup is one of the worst, contributing to obesity and mental impairment. 
And then we have all of the chemicals, the glyphosate, the atrazine, the chemicals that were, you know, the EPA dropped their approval of last year that are still being sold at Walmart and whatever farmers places today. And they're still using tons of it because it's, it's economical. It's the, it's, and I understand that, that farmers have to make a living, but they can't make a living if they're killing all of us and themselves and their families too. Yeah. And so we, we need to get away from things like glyphosate, which the only way to do that is to really start eating organic diets. That's easier said than done as well. Yeah. And then there's detoxification. Then there's the supplementation that we have for people who live in this world, who live you know, in, near the depot, who live near the Superfund site, who live near Mon former Monsanto, and we have those things. And that basically detoxification, I, most of you probably do know, but in case it, it's basically cleaning your system and I, I don't right. want to call it a well, cleanse exactly, well, it's but it's chelating resetting. a lot of times. It's, it's getting the heavy metals and, and pesticides and chemicals out of the body that don't belong in there. And most of these pests, of course, no pesticide was supposed to accumulate in human tissue, yet glyphosate does. It mimics both manganese and it mimics, mimics the amino acid glycine and actually reproduces the glyphosate as glycine in your body. So your body starts actually reproducing this stuff. Which is Roundup. Which is Roundup. For those, glyphosate is Roundup. That's the, yeah. that's the chemical in Roundup. So as we, as, as we get away from things like that and as we start to uh, need the, to detox, they, don't, they won't just come out of our systems. We have to use chelators, which are like for us, are things like bentonite clay, fulvic acid, humic acid. Uh, we have uh, herbs and, and extracts like uh, berberine based extracts that can repair the blood brain barrier that's damaged from the glyphosate and other chemicals. So there's, we've, we've done a lot of research into that um, and us traveling to the Amazon has certainly helped a lot with that because there's so, so much pesticide use that's going on also down there. Well, I know um, for the viewers out there, we're going to have upcoming shows here where they are going to have live question and answers where you guys are able to call in, Facebook them in. We're not there for this one because this is just the first one, but it will be uh, very soon here. Um, so I'm going to ask some questions they've uh, had from some of their current viewers. Uh, what treatment should I use for a dry nose now that the heat is turned on at night? Because I know it's getting cold out there. So. Oh wow! These, I, don't, I haven't read these questions. She, she Surprise! Read, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what would we use for a dry nose? Uh -huh. like dry, because well, of the heat being turned on at night. And, and that's something that people need to be careful of uh, this time of year is to not overheat your home. A lot of people like to in the summer sleep and be cold outside of the covers, but then when it gets cold, they get it hot outside the covers and wonder why they're miserable. So they need to make sure that they get their temperature right to start with. The other thing is what kind of heat are they using? Gas heats are more drying, electric heat is not as much. Uh, but based on that, you still have to, uh, you have to sometimes do things to what we call your mucous membrane to, to help nourish them. There's a couple of things. One in particular would be, an easy one would be to take st some uh, slippery elm tea and start drinking mm -hmm. like a cup full of slippery elm tea a day. Slippery elm tea helps to coat the mucous membrane and it helps sort of with the moisture level. Um, to hydrate the body, you also need to make sure that, you know, before you go to bed that you drink plenty of water, not too much obviously, but some water. Uh, don't we, want to be up all night, right? Don't want to be up all night, <laughs> but at the same time, as much as you can tolerate, and that'll help out a lot. Um, other than that, you know, we, there's, uh, there's the omega-3s that can help somewhat with, uh, with the moisture level in your body. Um, and I think that probably the main thing to do would be to transition into it where you um, adjust the temperature outside and you might even c consider using a, a, a humidifier in the room because it'll add the moisture back that you're, you're taking away if it's that big of a deal. What happens is people get, will get a lot of inflammation infections and they'll get things like, um, I mean they'll run into all kind of colds and things when they get uh, cold because that the in inflammation that happens in their mucous membrane and when that inflammation happens it makes you more susceptible to you know the bacterium and all thriving so you want to reduce that inflammation as much as you can. Well um, is there a way to treat a headache without using drugs? Oh, wow. Well, first you have to determine why, why do you have the headache. Headache can be from hormones, a headache can be from chemicals, a headache can be from um, stress, and a headache can be from a myriad of problems that you're having in your body. Um, traditional headaches, you know, if, you're, uh, if, you, if it's chemical sensitivity, uh, one of the best things you can do is just take some white willow bark. We have a product called MigraCare that uses white willow and what else is in white, uh, MigraCare? White willow. Um, which is the salicylic acid, um, and then it has uh, feverfew, um, and then I don't know what the other ingredient is, but that formula is really good uh, to help even with migraines. Um, but we like to, to figure out why they're having these headaches. We'll start asking questions, and, and a lot of times it'll be mold in their home. 
or maybe mold in their work area, or maybe a new carpet. There, we got a new carpet in one of our offices the other day, mm -hmm. and, well, the other day, the other year. And <laughs> <laughs> when you've been at it for 30 years, it all runs together. And we, uh, we got that carpet in, and we literally had to have the carpet clean three wow. times. Um, and I was getting headaches every time we were there. Wearing clothes before washing it can also uh, give you headaches. Those, we, I, those I, chemicals. I got some shirts in for the Amazon, some ex like these special blend shirts yeah. that just throws your moisture out of it. You know, it just throws it away, just gets rid of it. And uh, so I got some of those for our, our next trip. And they just came in. We had made the mistake of, for some reason, sniffing them. We oh, opened no. the package and sniffed, and it, 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 I felt like we were at, at Monsanto. You know, we we're just just sniffing chemicals. It was terrible. And so you always need to wash clothes well before you uh, before you wear them. Matter of fact, if you want the least toxic clothes, go to the thrift store. I know that's weird, but it, in, in my mind, of course, the way I was raised was a lot different. But um, but our kids love going to the thrift store and stuff. And so um, they'll they'll do things like uh, you know go to the thrift store and find you know they'll spend twenty dollars and walk out with you know. 20 things, you know, so they enjoy it. But those clothes have been washed. Yeah. Those, the, the chemicals. We started looking into some uh, hiking pants. This this actual brand of hiking pants that I'm using. That's one of your hairs. Um, this these hiking pants have glyphosate in them. Oh wow! When they're when they're uh -huh. right right on the rack, uh, laying there on the rack, sitting there on the rack, they have chemicals on them that don't need to be in our system. And of course, you absorb through your into your bloodstream through your skin very easily. So. Washing the clothes, getting clothes that are pre-owned, uh, those are those are some ideas to be able to you know protect against that. Well, I'm going to throw another one. Um, my preschool child gets bronchitis often in the colder seasons, especially because it's cool outside right now. Can we do something to build up his resistance to avoid this happening again this fall? Preschool, uh, yeah. The well, uh, there's there's a protocol that we have, and it used to be called the COVID-19 protocol, but we figured it might be best to just call it the protocol because you know it's. It's working for more. It's than working just for everything. Yeah. It's an antiviral, and people are using it. And it and it's a and it's a, a combination of a few products. So it just depends on the age of the child. For that child, I'd probably recommend uh, looking into elderberry extract. Uh, we have a really potent five X elderberry extract. Also, uh, some vitamin C uh, would be a good idea, and the P seventy seven, which is the antiviral. Uh, P seventy seven is a combination of carvacrol or oregano oil, artemisia and a pine needle in a base of hemp seed oil and was extremely effective against uh, COVID-19. We've had like, uh, I think 550,000 bottles or something that have that left and that we've never had a case of COVID with someone taking it. And we, we're carrying a case of it again down to, to Peru when we go because it's also good for malaria and dengue and everything else, but anything that's a virus. Uh, and so we, this, this particular formula is really good to have on hand. There's a there's a therapeutic there's sort of a maintenance dose or a preventative dose and there's a, you know a dose for acute issues when they start having problems so those would be the main ones uh, vitamin C a good a good um, a good uh, liposomal vitamin C a good um, elderberry extract and then the P77 and our elderberry is kid approved okay. yeah it tastes delicious yeah oh, they put good. it they, we've we've heard <laughs> that they put it on ice cream. So I don't. Uh -oh. Yeah, that was one of the testimonials. In California, they, they do. Actually, that was in <laughs> California. Do. Yeah, they really probably do. Yeah. Well, um, tell the viewers. So now the big announcement is um, Matt and Deborah are going to start doing this live on a weekly basis um, in a couple weeks coming up. So let the viewers know when the date and time that it's going to start. And at that point, we want you guys to chime in. We will have a phone number on the screen for you where you can call in live. We will also have Facebook Live going where you're watching them, but you can also chime in your questions on Facebook there live, and we're going to get them get them to them right there on the air, and you're going to be able to ask stuff. They may not make them to all of them, but um, I'll let you go ahead and pop that really quick. Was it November 16th? Mm -hmm. November, oh, wow, I remember. Thursday. I remember. That's the brain fog. Um, <laughs> November the 16th. It's uh, a Thursday. It's a Thursday, and it will be 7 p.m. We were going to do the next week, but that's... That's uh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So uh, we're going to do a little early. Actually, we're flying in from the Amazon that day. So we may not look like much, but we will be here. <laughs> so everybody, please tell your friends, tell your family, pump, you know, shoot the show out to everybody. Let them know that um, they're going to be able to send in questions live. And um, we're going to get them to them and let them see if they're able to answer it for you. You may get some uh, helpful tips for some stuff you're going through right now or your uh, child is going through, your parents, it, you know, whatever may be helpful to you. It's an opportunity to pick your brains and um, learn some stuff. And as we move forward, we're going to have some local physicians on and some other folks that can talk health and wellness with us and, and because we work with several around here and, uh, and that'll be great, I think. 
and then uh, I think uh, basically their shop is here in Oxford. So we're going to wrap this up for today, but please mark your calendars November the 16th, 7 p.m. Get ready because we're going to be live and you're going to be able to answer questions. We thank you, Matt and Deborah, for today. You guys have a wonderful day and stay healthy.